So by putting these boards in just loosely right now, we're able to very quickly set up a deck, in this case about 200 square feet per shot, of a floor that we can then lightly touch with our abrasive sanding pad and then go over it with the Rubio Monocoat. It's also one last opportunity for us to quality control. And in this case, for whatever reason, this board came through and perhaps could make it. It is a very aggressive, very rugged grade, but I'm going to ask uh, my coworker to go ahead and put it aside. And one more chance to quality control. <clears throat> On the other hand, Let's look, take a close look at this one, which has a, what is clearly a compression track, a compression crack across it. And, yep, yeah, yeah, this is another chance for us to say, well, I think we're going to just put this one aside too. Now, this one can be cut on either side uh, on the next go-round, whereas the other board that we looked at is probably, sorry, just for the kindling pile. But this one actually can just be graded by cutting out across that compression failure. Yeah, and really within 20 minutes, Jake and I were able to go ahead and install, so to speak, this particular 200 square foot deck ready to be. Okay, so one of the things you're going to want to do is be able to get uh, abrasive uh, pads. They're a lot like a scotch Bright pad and they come in different colors <clears throat> our first go round here we're going to actually use this tan colored one it's slightly more abrasive than the white the white we're going to use to buff in the rubio afterwards but this one's a little more coarse it uh, first is going to just go ahead and brush up use it to just brush down all the dirt that's on there if there is any not a lot but if there is any then we'll sweep it off and then we'll use this tan one to apply the Rubio and the white one to buff it in after. You can see the white one's a little bit, uh, got some wear and some use on it. Uh, that was from the last job we did, uh, but it's still in fine shape. Some people, by the way, like you to use the red instead of the tan, but the Rubio uh, training program we went through said that they like the tan just fine. So either one, I think it's great. So Jake's uh, makes it look easy. In the first uh, probably few minutes, you'll feel like you're riding a Bronco at a cowboy bar. Um, but then after that, it'll look like this, just smooth as can be. And the key is pushing down will make it go left and raising up will make it go right as simple as that really all we're doing right now is we're doing a dry run with a you know sort of an abrasive pad but not one that will take away this patina or texture that is you know the key to this particular product we call this our saw kist because we touch it with a circle saw texture machine and it has some patina on it and some not it comes from granary boards uh, from all the way from the Midwest through the Montana and Idaho and the Eastern Oregon where granaries are no longer used in that way to we get the boards and turn them into our Nailian and Naughty Sawfish. Most of these are Douglas fir, though I can see some Idaho white pine in there, maybe a little spruce. It's a mixture. What I want you to look at though is the light blonde tones because what the Rubio will do is turn it into a much richer look. When we're done with this, we're going to sweep it off and then we'll apply the Rubio. So we've uh, pre screened and swept the floor. And now I'm going to load up. I have a I have a squeeze box here, a squeeze bottle with the already mixed two parts of Rubio, part uh, A and B. The a B, or actually maybe it's called C, is the hardener. And then we put a little bit on this.
pad ahead of time. And Jake will go ahead and Hold on, Jake. Okay. Since it's a very heavy machine on top of that pad, it's not going anywhere. And then I'm also going to put some spots ahead of him. You can go ahead. Then he lifts up the pad, puts it on top of that next bunch of oil. Only do about what you can do in about 15 minutes. So we're going to do, this is a, and you know, I would guess it's about 10 by 10 area. Uh, so this is a little bigger than that. So we're going to actually do this floor in two parts. We're applying the oil first. And then we'll buff it with the white pad. As it gets to the edges, whether it's our platform here or whether it's the wall in your home, you know, you probably want to do a lot of that with my hand, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. The Rubio is actually going to molecularly bond with the top layers of the wood, closing up the pores so that it becomes much more water resistant than normal, and frankly, than most any other project product we've used. And this is all done, we'll let it cure. In this case, it's a 200 square foot project, so we'll just be able to let it cure in place. If not, if we had to move it off to put more on here, we usually just stack them in these racks of that to let them dry. And we want them to dry, you know, honestly, a while. Because this is a pretty natural product, and you want the curing process to go on as long as you'll let it. A minimum of 24 hours, before you're actually walking on it and stocking feet, and then uh, up to five, six days before you actually call it home. And we're moving along quite quickly. We don't want to hurry it any, fa you know, any faster than the job gets done. Important news is that it's a really thin coat. If you don't make it a thin coat, it will not cure. And so even though you think you don't have enough on, you probably do. And so you can see I put some blocks of the Rubio in front of Jake as it goes down. This row. Gets Now we're coming to the end of our deck. Oh, need a little bit more. Unbelievable that I still have some left here. I do have to do the edges, go around the edges a little bit. But, you know, this Rupi has expensive stuff, but man, does it cover. Even with this more rugged grade, it's actually covered more than I thought it would. And again, it's because it's important not to leave heavy amounts. You really just want a very thin amount. So the next thing we do, we're going to polish this thing with the with the white. And go over the whole thing real quickly. 
and what it'll do is it'll help us catch any little areas like this for instance I don't know if you can see it you can see there's just a little extra right there um, but what we'll do is we'll go through the white it'll help burnish the oil into the wood a little bit more so right now Jake's just using the center disc in one of these uh, beige pads to catch the edges that we didn't really want to go over with the orbital polisher. Um, again, just a little bit. You don't want too much. And, uh, and you would have to do this if, for instance, you were in the corner of a room or sometimes up against the taped off baseboard or whatever it is that you really don't want to get to with these with this uh, orbital. You just want to rub it in good as can be. If it's a smooth floor, not like this one, but if it's a smooth wood, you probably want to take a terry cloth and knock it down with a terry cloth as well, you know, just to smooth it out a little bit. You don't need much though, that's for sure. This is the white pad. I'm just polishing the Rubio. And you can see that it's not stressful because I've got it resting against my pelvic area here as well as I've got the balance down. All right, so here we are. It's finished. This is how we pre-finish these things. It's not very sophisticated, honestly. We don't have fancy machines, finishing machines here. We found this to be just simple and straightforward, but the reason I'm sharing it is that it's very similar to what you do in your own house, other than the actual nailing, which we didn't do here because we're going to take it apart and stack it when done.